An age-old debate around some ancient artwork is back in the spotlight in the UK. Calls are growing for Britain to return a famous group of sculptures from the Greek Parthenon, sculptures that Greece says were stolen some 200 years ago by Britain's Lord Elgin. Abby Kugathasen is on the story for us, so you would know these either as the Parthenon marbles or as the Elgin marbles, Abby, depending on where you fall in this long-standing debate. Certainly, Heather, and there's a project underway here in England called the Parthenon Project to sort out a plan so that Greece has access to these artifacts. Former Conservative Culture Minister Ed Vasey is involved, and he says the most realistic way forward would be an agreement between the British Museum, where these artifacts are housed, and the Greek government to share the treasures. I asked him, though, why he was advocating for a solution where the items are loaned to Greece, not returned to Greece. Here's what he had to say. If you're saying that the path of culture should be returned without any caveats, I say you have a very strong case. But as I say, I live in the real world. I think the Greeks would also acknowledge that the British Museum has cared for the Parthenon sculptures for 200 years, that they are in a museum which is visited by millions of people from all over the world. And giving them up is not an easy decision for the British Museum to take. And he did acknowledge that a loan may be difficult to sort out because that would likely involve Athens accepting that the British Museum has legal ownership over the marble sculptures. He hopes that both sides can put that issue of ownership aside, but that may be a very tall ask, especially for Greece. And the museum here has previously said that a 1963 act prevents it from returning any items at all, and the Parthenon Project is trying to have that law changed. But this is one of many stories about accusations of imperial theft and what can be done to right those colonial wrongs, Heather. Germany and France have taken steps to, as you say, Abby, right those colonial wrongs, and they have returned some objects and artifacts to Africa. Where does the UK fall in this effort? France gave back 26 pieces to the country of Benin last year. Germany has recently signed an agreement to return more than 1,000 pieces to Nigeria. And just this week, the Smithsonian in the U.S. returned 29 Benin bronzes. Some institutions in the U.K. have taken steps as well. Cambridge University has given back those items in their possession. But there are concerns that other institutions in the United Kingdom are lagging behind. The largest collection of Benin bronzes in the world is at the British museum. It has more than 900 pieces, and it's widely accepted that British colonial forces looted these culturally significant items as they ransacked the Kingdom of Benin, now modern-day Nigeria. And last year, Abuja officially asked for these treasures to be returned. I spoke with Professor Chika Okeke Agalu at the Princeton University, and he said the return of these artifacts is about healing, but also a celebration of previous generations in Africa and their achievements. Let's have a listen. Imagine what that means for many countries where some of their finest works of art and design reside elsewhere. Uh, and think about what that has done for decades uh, to a people who uh, for centuries were told that they were worth nothing and were therefore worth selling or colonizing. Now, this is not just about the past. This country will crown a new king and queen next year, and the queen consort's crown features the Koenor diamond. India wants that jewel back. Given that tension, it's not clear right now whether Buckingham Palace will use that particular crown in May at that ceremony. Critics say the United Kingdom has not reconciled with its colonial past, that it's still celebrating an empire that no longer exists, but hanging on to these treasures to prove that it once did. Thank you, Abby. Abby Kugelassen from London.